Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review. The Gas Lamp Killer Breakthrough. This guy is a California beat music producer as well as DJ whose music thrives within the worlds of glitch hop, instrumental hip hop, as well as turntablism. I've been following the guy's work for a little while. First caught on to him in 2009, I believe, when he released a compilation of, of tracks called All Killer on B Music, which is kind of this record label that just like releases B, I, I guess, I don't want to say quality, but I, for lack of a better word, quality music, just rarities. While I do wish he was a little bit more experimental or just a little bit more adventurous with the way he sampled things, maybe manipulating the samples a little bit more, from here it was just totally clear that the Gas Lamp Killer is really thriving off of the legacy of albums like Introducing, for example. Later down the road, he had two pretty solid EPs on Brain Feeder Records, the second of which I definitely, definitely recommend. But when I really fell for this guy's work and got interested in him was when he made that collaborative LP with Gonja Sufi, a Sufi and a killer in 2010. Just a lot of unique textures, sounds, and, and, and source material, just nice beats. Again, there were moments that when I kind of dug through what I found to be the source material for some of these tracks, yeah, you know, maybe things could have been manipulated more more, maybe things could have been sampled more creatively. But you know, that's just kind of what the Gas Lamp Killer is. He is just a master crate digger. Now everything the Gas Lamp Killer has been releasing musically has been building up to this. The profile of his label Brain Feeder Records has, has been growing over the past couple years too. I mean, him and Brain Feeder are really icons when it comes to a certain musical scene right now. and. I don't think this LP disappoints. In my opinion, it's actually one of the more ambitious LPs I've heard come off of Brain Feeder so far. <laughs> Throughout the 17 tracks on, on this LP, the Gas Lamp Killer actually pulls together some pretty distinct tracks of, of different shapes, sizes, sounds and textures, styles and, and complexities too. And he does it with an array of guest musicians, producers, and, and Gonja Sufi hops on a couple tracks too. The Gas Lamp Killer brings on beat brethren like Dim Light and Computer J and Shigeto and, and Daedalus. He also brings on live instrumentation from people like RSI on this LP and there are some brain feeder cohorts on here as well like Miguel Atwood Ferguson and Sam I Am as well. And there's more where that came from. I mean, there's just a really hefty guest list on, on this album, which helps bring uh, some amazing variety to these songs. The introduction on this LP is kind of a, a musical collage, just like nothing but crate dug magic, kind of overlapping, fed through this psychedelic fog. It really kind of sets a dark, weird, mad scientist assembled tone for the album. Gonja Sufi kind of does his thing on the next track over a string sample. Not an incredibly developed track, but it does kind of get the flavor out there. You know, there are quite a few moments on here that do not feel developed by traditional standards. However, dudes like Jay Dilla, Mad Lib, and, and of course Flying Lotus have proven the power in, in kind of delivering albums with this more ADD oriented style, jumping from one idea to the next. And I'm not necessarily against a one or two minute motif or, or beat or anything like that, as long as the artist can make something impactful or moving or memorable meaningful within the short amount of time that they have given themselves. I really dig the track Holy Mountain Washington, which has these really just loud, pounding, sharp, crisp drums backed up with these just very eerie string shots and, and kind of a strange whistle really kind of hanging in the ambiance in the background. I like the juxtaposition of the instruments on this track. It's really like just some bitter and, and moody ear candy. The Gas Lamp Killer brings on some guests for the track Dead Vets, which is like some psychedelic hip hop infused funk. But things get really layered and, and complex and detailed on the track Flange Face with, with Michael Atwood Ferguson, where you have the Gas Lamp Killer delivering these just 
heavy drums, synthetic, distorted muck with some synthesizers and Ferguson just lays on these wonderful strings that have kind of a Middle Eastern quality to them, but at times they, they kind of start dripping down the wall like droplets of blood in a horror movie. <laughs> That's one of the longer tracks on the album and it's kind of epic peaks like that that really, in my eyes, justify the smaller and, and shorter moments. It's like you kind of have these well-developed giants and then these, you know, shorter little morsels and, and bits hanging around them, maybe buzzing around them like flies. It gives the album an interesting flow, a disjointed but, but interesting flow. There's always just kind of like a surprise turn about to happen, and I like that. The track he does with Daedalus is another dark and, and moody number, and I love the really bouncy keyboard arpeggios that, that come off of that. They sound like they almost have kind of like an 8-bit quality to them or something like that. There's just something video game about them. I love the two tracks that close this thing out. Seven Years of Bad Luck for Fun is a great track. Really glitchy, really tortured. And the closer in the dark goes six minutes and stays engaging throughout. I mean, it's really a climactic finish for this LP and kind of wraps things up, brings things together. It's kind of like it tells you everything and then it reminds you of what it just told you on this last track with some very spacious, progressive synthesizers and, and the strings come back in as well, the drums are heavy, and just the mood is, is so thick you can cut it with a knife, just really tense. You know, are there negatives on this LP? For sure, there are tracks that I feel are kind of forgettable or maybe didn't have that impact in the short amount of time that Gaslamp Killer gives himself to make these tracks, like the, the Sam I Am track, for example, which I didn't really get a strong emotional pull from. But that's part of the reason I do like love a lot of the tracks on this album because they just have such a strong emotional vibe to them. This album definitely has a really heavy and, and dark quality to it. Lots of texture, lots of great production. I feel like a lot of people may get kind of annoyed with how disjointed this album can be, and certainly a lot of the talent and a lot of the interesting ideas that come up on this album are outsourced through a very long series of guest musicians. But, you know, what does Cal Chichesta think about this LP? Mr. Gaslam Killer, violence is not the answer. And uh, Anthony is uh, probably feeling a string saving her uh, lady and your album. And that, my friends, is the review. I hate Cal Chichesta. What did you think of this LP if you've given it a listen? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? And what should I review next besides Cruel Summer? Let me know. Anthony Fantano. The Gas Lamp Killer, forever. <laughs>